why should you pay attention to the minor leagues? Well, for one, because the minor leagues is the lifeblood of winning. Let's say that you don't know anything about the minor leagues and all you care about is the Dodgers winning World Series. Totally understandable, I get it. Why should you pay attention to the minor leagues? Well, for one, because the minor leagues is the lifeblood of winning. Hey, do you like Will Smith? The Dodgers just re-signed him. Pretty darn good, right? You remember that team with Cody Bellinger? Do you like Walker Buehler? All those guys. Jock Peterson, you remember the World Series the Dodgers won in 2020? Gavin Lux? All those guys. Clayton Kershaw. If you like those guys, guess where they were developed? They were developed in the Dodgers system, which is the best, in my opinion, developmental and scouting system in baseball. So the first reason why, if you don't pay attention to the minor leagues, that you probably should start, in my opinion, is because it's like in college, if the recruiting is your lifeblood, the minor leagues, the minor league system is the lifeblood of your system. So if you like signing a Shohei Otani and Yoshinobu Yamamoto, and Tyler Glass now, and James Paxton, and Teoscar Hernandez. If you like having the ability to be able to sign those guys, then you really need to root for your farm system to continue to produce guys like James Altman because they are very cheap. Will Smith was very, very cheap for a long period of time, and he even gave him the hometown discount. But because James Altman's a 4.4 war guy, but he's performing which is like a $35 million, uh, $35 million a year contract, but he's making 30 times less than that. Because James Altman is making so much less than he produced, that frees up the cash and the, the space to be able to go get a Shohei Otani and do those kinds of things. So for number one, you need to root for cheap contracts, which prospects give you with production behind that, like a James Altman type situation. Number two is... We also saw in the Tyler Glassnow deal, trust me, when Johnny DeLuca came up last year and showed that he can hit Major League Pitching, and when Ryan Pepio showed that he made his adjustments and was the Dodgers' best pitcher down the stretch last year, guess what that netted the Dodgers? That is correct. It netted them Tyler Glassnow. That's because the minor league system developed Ryan Pepio and Johnny DeLuca to the point to where a very intelligent system like the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, like those two guys enough to give up a guy like Tyler Glass now, and then the Dodgers got their cake and they ate it too whenever he signed to the five-year extension. So again, let me recap that. The two reasons why you would want to follow the Dodgers minor league system, one is you need cheap contracts on your major league roster. Those cheap contracts are provided by prospects you developed in the system, like James Altman, hopefully like an Andy Pahez. And, and guys like that in the future, a Bobby Miller, somebody like that. And two, they give you the trade pieces you need to go out. Hey, if you feel like the Dodgers still need a shortstop, if they need to go get Willie Adamas, we'll then, then check in with Dodgers down the farm, and we will keep you in tune with the guys in the system that are performing the best that would be the most attractive to a Milwaukee's Brewers team that they would want to give Willie Adamas to the Dodgers. The Dodgers, they have started their 3-2 and two on the season. Oklahoma City, the AAA Dodgers, well, they're not the Dodgers anymore, the AAA Oklahoma City Baseball Club. They need to be called the 89ers. They started this weekend as well. So what we're going to do in today's show, going to start from the bottom up. Hey, we've had a big funnel of new viewers, thanks in large part to the Shohei Otani signing, and then just all the signings all in all that the Dodgers have had over the offseason. There's a lot of new interest in the Dodgers. So I'm sure there's a lot of fans out there that are big fans of the Dodgers but don't know a whole lot about the minor league system. Now, I say it all the time, the Dodgers daily family here. We are the best crowd out there, so I'm sure for a lot of you, this is going to be a lot of redundancy. But for others, I felt like it was very important to explain the minor league system, how it works for everybody, but especially in the Dodgers system, explain each level, where they're at, where they're located, and who's coaching and all that. So whenever I talk about all these down-the-farm segments, you can have this kind of as your Bible to go back to and say, okay, well, what is he talking about there? What did that mean? You can go back to this, this segment here and this show here and this episode 
and you can go back and make it all make sense. So whenever we get into the regular season, it can make more sense to you. So today's show is going to be dedicated to explaining the minor league system. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's not waste any more time. Let's take a trip down the farm. So let's actually start with the international players. This is the one that people know probably the least about. Now, in the past, there have been independent leagues like the Venezuelan League and all of that. But all of those leagues went away, and now there is only one league for the international prospects. So if you get signed, you have to go to the Dominican Republic, and you play in the Dominican Summer League. They call it the DSL. So if you hear me say in the DSL, that means Dominican Summer League, that is a, an international prospect from anywhere. It does not mean they have to be from the Dominican. The Dodgers, they love signing people. You know, hey, Guillermo Zuniga, who just threw for the Cardinals the other day, who was in the Dodgers system, he's actually from Colombia, Cartagena, Colombia. And then the Dodgers, hey, they've signed catchers like four or five years in a row, Diego Cartaya being one of them, Yaner Fernandez, Jesus Calise, Jorge Puerta, who were from Venezuela. So just because it says Dominican Summer League does not mean it's only Dominican Republic players. It's players from all of the international areas, Panama, Colombia, Dominican Republic, all of them come together for the Dominican Summer League. It's about a three or four month league. If you want to know more about it, Manny Pimentel, Manelik Pimentel, who I had on oh two or three months ago, he explained how the Dominican Summer League actually works. So what happens is when you're in those international areas, when you're 12 or 13, the scouts start noticing you. Manny Pimentel, by the way, is the director of scouting in the DR. And then as they notice you, they, you start going to these tournaments, and then, then they draft you whenever you're 16. And then whenever they draft you, that's whenever you go to the Dominican Summer League. And then all the scouts can notice you from there. So the way it works is you have area scouts that, that work different areas of, and this, this works whether you're in the United, United States or internationally. You have area scouts that, that find these players and then they take them to the their scouting supervisors like Manny Pimentel is for the Dodgers. The scouting supervisor is the one that signs off on them. At that point, the organization like the Dodgers sign them, and then that's when they go to the DSL. And usually it takes a year, maybe two. Of course, you got to remember guys like Eddie's Leonard, Yorbit Vivas, they were signed when they were 16 years old. So there's absolutely no hurry of getting them stateside. Jesus Calise, I believe, made it when he was 20, 20 years old, something like that, right after 2020. So imagine being an international player, and here you are, you're from maybe Cartagena, Colombia, or you're from Venezuela, or anywhere in the DR, and all of a sudden you get the call from Manny Pimentel that you're going stateside. You're finally going to get to play in the United States. I can tell you that Manny told you know, Manny said a point blank in that interview. That is the goal of almost every young boy that grows up in especially the DR and Venezuela. Hey, they want to become a major league baseball player. So when a guy like Jesus Calise, a catcher that was with the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes last year, Tyrone Lorenzo had a chance to talk to him. When they get that call and they're told they're going to to play in the United States, that is a dream come true for them. So what happens to them then? Then they go up to what's called the Complex League. So at the Complex, here's what happens. So like for the first three months or so of the season, it's more so just an extended spring training. You go out, you do drills, you throw bullpens, you have live BPs, you take ground balls, you do all the things that you would expect to see from spring training. You have a bunch of different instructors that can work with all these young kids. So what you're going to have at the Complex is a mix of of international players who just made it stateside, the newly, a lot of times, the, the newly drafted players out of the United States draft that we see every year in July, and then also maybe some guys that are rehabbing. So you're going to see some major league guys that have experience at the complex that are rehabbing and just trying to, because the facilities are all there in one spot. So it's going to be a neat mix as far as all the guys that are working out. And then the second half of the season, in the complex, they actually play games, just like they do with any other affiliate. So it's just like everywhere else. You play, oh, probably 50, 60 games, something like that. And so the first half is instructs, then the second half is playing games. So that's the complex. 
And so a lot of times, like when Kendall George got drafted last year, the guys that, that are either uh, that are either international or out of high school, most of the time they start at the complex. Kenny George started at the complex last year, the Dodgers' number one prospect. He did so well. Of course, that draft happened while the, you got to remember the games of the second half. So when the draft happens, the games have already started. That's the interesting part of it. So Kenny George got into the complex league games, did so well. They're like, hey, we can't leave this guy here. He's too good. So then they had to send him, or not had to, they decided to send him to Rancho Cucamonga. So the levels are you have the complex league, then you have single A Rancho Cucamonga, and then you have high A, so you have two A levels, a single A, which is the lower level of A ball, in Rancho Cucamonga, which is a suburb of L.A., then in Midland, Michigan, you have the high A Great Lakes, which is the high A level. So they go from the complex to Rancho to uh, Midland, Michigan, which is which is the Great Lakes loon. So Great Lakes isn't actually a town. That's just what they call it. It's actually in Midland, Michigan. Then from there, they go to Double A Tulsa, which is in Oklahoma. And from Double A Tulsa, just 90 miles down the road, a little bit west, a little bit south, down the Turner Turnpike, they go to Triple A Oklahoma City. That's one of the big reasons why in 2015 the Dodgers decided to have their double A and triple A's in Oklahoma. A lot of people ask that question. Well, because in 2011, the city of Tulsa built one oak field, and it is absolutely any. Don't ask me. I mean, don't trust me. Ask anybody. One oak field with all their party porches and their hill and right center. It is maybe probably the nicest double A facility in all of the game of baseball. And so what's really cool about it, like a Deck McGuire, Ramon Troncoso, who is a coach at the single-A level in Rancho Cucamonga, on the same day, they can call a guy up. This has happened on Sundays before. Like Tulsa plays at 1 o'clock. Oklahoma City plays at 6. So a guy like Deck McGuire, there was a doubleheader, and they called Tulsa, and they said, hey, tell Deck to get in his car, drive to Oklahoma City. Deck actually pitched in a game for Tulsa, got in his car, drove to Oklahoma City, then pitched in a game that night for Oklahoma City. So the appeal to the Dodgers was the fact that their AA and AAA facilities are just 90 miles apart, and Tulsa just built a state-of-the-art, beautiful stadium in 2011. And Oklahoma City, back in 1998, opened up Bricktown Ballpark, which you've, if you've ever been there, the Bricktown Ballpark was made in the 90s. If you remember the, the Orioles Park, the Camden Yards there, they made those parks in the 90s, like like Jacobs Field in Cleveland. They made them patterned after like the old Ebbets Field for the Dodgers, where they had that old-time feel to them. So when you walk into the Bricktown Ballpark, of course, initially, I was there the night they opened it up in 1998. It was it seated over 14,000. I've been to probably 25 games, mostly Oklahoma State versus OU games, where it's completely packed. I have seen OSU and OU put close to 50,000 people in those stands over a weekend. On the weekends, Oklahoma City can get up to 10,000, 11,000 people in their stands. Tulsa will get anywhere from 7,500 to 8,000. So on the weekend in the state of Oklahoma in the middle of summer, you can get close to 20,000 people watching Dodgers baseball at the AAA and double a level so that's how it works again you, you start in the complex so like for the guys like dalton rushing let's say that you're a college player and you get drafted a guy like jake geloff last year most of those college the, the guys that are drafted out of college they go straight to rancho see in the past now here's a name that that all dodgers fans love tommy lasorda he loved going to ogden utah if you're a big dodgers fan you probably heard this story about how Tommy Lasorda loved Ogden, Utah. Well, why is that? Well, forever, Ogden, Utah was the rookie league team. So they actually, in 2020, they constricted everything. And a lot of teams, like Fresno, went from being a triple-A team all the way down to being a single-A team in the California League, just like the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. And that happened when they reshuffled all the minor leagues. Several cities lost teams. And so in that shuffle, the, the, a lot of teams lost what was the Pioneer League, which was the Rookie League. So a lot of the guys like Andy Pajes, a buddy of mine, John Latell, who went to OSU, a lot of the guys that are still in the system right now, play, Brandon Lewis, they all played in 2019 on that rookie ball team in Ogden, Utah. Austin Chubb was the manager of that. 
that was the last year for that rookie league team. So there is no more rookie league. So when you get drafted, you either go to the complex or you go straight to Rancho. Most of the upper-level college guys like Jake Geloff, Joe Vitrano, Dalton Rushing, guys like that, Patrick Copen, they just bypass the complex and go straight to Rancho, and, and they go from there. So it's really cool. About three-quarters of the way through the year, here you are grinding. You're tired. You have this roster. And then all of a sudden at Rancho, you get this influx of new guys that were just drafted out of college, and they bring a serious – element of excitement that is really needed during the what they call the dog days of summer i know this got kind of long but i wanted to explain exactly how the dodgers minor league system works again let me explain it again you have the the international league which all of them are in the dominican republic then you have the complex league which is at the spring training complex in arizona then you have what are called the affiliates so the complex isn't considered an affiliate the affiliates are starting with Rancho in single A, that Rancho Cucamonga. Then at high A, you have Great Lakes. Then at double A, you have Tulsa. Then at triple A, you have Oklahoma City. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this show today on the minor league system. I hope you tune in to all of our daily shows, all of our content. I have the schedule up on Twitter. So if you want to know when everything is coming, you can check that out. So thank you for tuning in. Until next time, go Dodgers.